Well, I want to welcome everybody to uh, the November Ion Piscataway, and we're doing a videotaping down here at the Robert Wood Johnson Barnabas Students Performance Center. And we have with us the head Rutgers basketball coach, Steve Peichel, and the opening season of the 2021-2022 season is about to start in October. And uh, this is the first time Coach Peichel's on Ion Piscataway. Uh, we had his counterpart in the football program, Greg Shiano, on earlier in the year. And we'd like to welcome you into the show, Coach wow. Peichel. I appreciate it. I want to welcome you here to our brand new center here. It's unbelievable. Yes. And uh, I saw Coach Shiano's interview too, hard act to follow. Yeah. He's doing an unbelievable job. I love him and uh, I'm glad to be here today. Well, the best part about Greg's thing, I, I asked him what did he miss about being out of New Jersey. And he goes, oh, I missed a good Italian meal. So <laughs> you know, he knows getting that. So there you go. But before we went on the show, I had an opportunity to um, uh, take a couple of shots here in the gym right there. I made a few of them. Uh, <laughs> but I, it's very um, hard to envision in the past what uh, former Rutgers head coaches had to go to in basketball and not having uh, sufficient practice facilities. And coach, why don't you, uh, we'll talk about what this facility means uh, to you as a coach and to players coming in. And then we'll talk about some of the coaching changes that have uh, uh, hap happening mm -hmm. for this season. And then we'll go, we got a, a rapid succession fire of questions yeah. for you, nothing that you can't handle. I love it. So let's go talk about, since we're here in this new uh, facility here, and most people in Piscataway Township haven't had the opportunity to come in this facility, but it is a truly state-of-the-art uh, facility. I was down here for the beam signing, mm -hmm. uh, down here as, as well as you were, Coach. Mm -hmm. uh, but it has really put the university on the map when it comes to uh, student athletes in, in the faci wow. training facility. I tell you what, it, you know, it's been a game changer. My first few years, we didn't have it. So I know what life was like before and what it's like right now. Um, we currently have four teams housed here. Our gymnastics program doing great. <laughs> Obviously, Coach Goodale yeah. has won national championships yeah. and this facility has helped him tremendously in wrestling. I work side by side with the Hall of Fame coach and Coach Stringer on the yeah. women's side and the tournament success she's had and putting players in the WNBA. And now on the men's basketball side, getting the chance to um, utilize this facility, which really helped, you know, raise our level to NCAA tournament level and yeah. winning the game the first time in 38 years. But it's state of the art. It, it's really for student athletes, health and, and wellness, very important part of this building. We have a nutrition center. Um, we have full-time doctors downstairs um, that can care for them. We have our strength and conditioning part of this mm. building. And then on this floor here is, is men's and women's basketball, our locker rooms, our film areas, where we watch film, our lounge area, where they can hang out and, and really help get our chemistry great before the season. Because I remind people all the time, basketball is a team sport and it takes all the pieces to fit in to make it work. And, um, but this facility is 24 hours a day. Uh, we also have an academic piece here, too. Yeah. So academics are taken care of. So where we used to have to go to like six different buildings on campus during yeah. the course of a day, they can get a lot done in just one building. And it you know saves a lot on, on their uh, wear and tear and time as you're trying to be great with time management and, you know, in, in college. So um, it's been a game changer for us. I'm so thankful um that it was built and um you know it has helped us in, in a lot of ways well i can appreciate the students um having to traverse the Rutgers campuses on mm -hmm. a student bus where you could stay in one location and do <laughs> your studying and do your training so instead of having spending time on a campus bus so coach mm -hmm. why don't we talk a little bit about you had some minor coaching staff changes here for the mm -hmm. upcoming season why don't you talk a little bit about your coaching staff I love it um you know we had two coaches leave and get promotions mm -hmm. um go on the road recruiting that's always everyone's goal as a coach to get to the top you know, three positions where you now are on the road and you're doing recruiting. So um, we lost Shoes Vitrone, who went yeah. to St. John's and very happy for him. He's one of the great people that have been involved with. And then Ben Asher went to Youngstown State and he's a recruiter there um, and very happy for him. And what happens when you have tremendous success, they're always yeah. trying to steal, you know, my guys. Um, and uh, well, those... I think that's also for you being in the coaching world, that's 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 good for you personally. Oh knowing that somebody else is moving on to the next level of their life and their profession. Exactly. No, it's great. And they got, 
you know, great opportunities for the family and myself. So I'm honored. I'm thankful. I, we keep branching out with, with our uh, family here. Jay Young's at Fairfield yeah. and Brian Dewar left to go to Fairfield. Now St. John's in Youngstown State. I love it. And it means we're doing good things here, you know, in Piscataway, building our basketball program. And uh, uh, we've raised a couple of guys up on our yeah. staff. And that's the good part. TJ Thompson is now uh, with Brandon Knight. We're lucky to have Brandon back every year. He's trying, he, you know, he, he people are trying to steal him. Um, he's unbelievable. Carl Hobbs is in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. uh, assistant coaches, he's won two national championships at University of Connecticut. So I got a great staff. Mike Larkin over there is, is my right hand man doing everything for us. And we were able to hire Tom Barrett, who's a really mm -hmm. analytical uh, you know, expert, and he looks at basketball through analytics, and he's given us a different Not look like on Money things. Ball, like the, the, the yeah, movie Money yeah, Ball. in some ways, you know, a little bit like that. But he looks at basketball a little bit differently. I love what he's yeah. brought to our our program here. So I'm blessed with a great staff. So, Coach, I think what you ought to do with with your family you should start a genealogy family tree about uh, all the coaching <laughs> folks that left your yeah. your wings and, and branched out yeah. so let's get to, right to the some of the questions um having the fans back in, in the building this year well first of all let's let's step back to uh 2020 um you were on the cusp of an ncaa uh bid and then COVID hit right to you personally what did that feel feel like when that happened you know just so disappointed for the guys. Yeah. I mean, we earned a bid. We were in the tournament. Yeah. And not only were we in the tournament, I thought we could have won some games, too. Yeah. We were great chemistry. Yeah. We had a really good basketball team that year. But, you know, um, disappointed, especially for that senior class. Yeah. Um, they never got a chance to experience it. Uh, but it really, you know, motivated us, you know, during that COVID year to come back and do something that we did, but we didn't get credit for doing, um, was going to the NCAA tournament. So, Thankful we were able to come back the next year under tremendous yeah. like pressure to, to not get COVID, to no one in the stands, um, and to be able to go through a whole year and do it again in almost the same fashion. Sure. You know, we, we had to win the last game of the year at Purdue the year yeah. before yeah. Uh, on their senior night, one of the toughest places to play, and we did that. And then this past year, we had to win at Minnesota yeah. on their senior night right. on the road, you know, to secure an NCAA bid. And, you know, for our guys to come back and do it again, back to back years really, you know, says a lot about, you know, them and also says a lot about the discipline they had not to get COVID and to yeah. stay away from, you know, an invisible disease and, and the things that they had to do, the sacrifices they had to make. If I remember, your team was one of the few teams that did not have a COVID outbreak mm -hmm. right there. That is correct. And yeah. that's, you know, Dr. Bouchard, our yeah. team doctor, did an unbelievable job, but our guys had to be real disciplined and, and uh, had to stay away from people, um, you know, at all at all turns. So it was exciting. We were able to accomplish that, even even though that was a huge obstacle that we had to overcome. So now that uh, the 2021 2022 season is going to be in full swing with fans back in the uh, building, um, the rack is historically a very <laughs> hard place for opponents to play in mm -hmm. because of the noise level. What kind of energy gives that, uh, does that give to the players with that? Well, I, I will tell you that the last year we were able to have fans before COVID, we were 18 and one. We had the, the uh, best winning home record of any team in college basketball. Yeah. So you think about all the tough venues there mm -hmm. are in college basketball, but none were tougher than right here at the rack yeah. in Piscataway. The fans, the energy, you know, our players play off that, you know. I think it, it affects refereeing. It affects uh, the other team a great deal. And, uh, you know, to get people back in the stands, first of all, we have the best and most passionate fan base that there is. And our students now have jumped on board. We always had longstanding, you know, season ticket holders yeah. and people that have always been the community that comes out. But, you know, we really got our students involved. Um, that's what helped us become 18 and one. And, and we're looking for that same advantage here this year. Now, yeah. when we welcome fans back into the stands, I, I think it's fair to say that a lot of the uh, longtime fan base is itching to get back in the building for this team <laughs> to goes without saying now, uh, now people, when they read the sports pages who may not be basketball, um, mm -hmm fans or whatever, they always hear this word uh, transfer portal. Right. Can you explain what that is to uh, somebody who may be a light person? And how has that 
uh, uh, basically you as a coach and other coaches around the country affect it where students can go and transfer wherever they want to? Yeah, I mean, students could always transfer. Yeah. And now um, they have what's called the transfer portal. In the past, you could transfer, but you have to sit out a year yeah. before you could play. Now the transfer portal has made it instant. So you could transfer and you're eligible to play right away right. at the next institution. So, you know, it gives student athletes more opportunities, uh, more chances to, you know, continue their career at other places. Um, it also gives them opportunities to study different majors at different places too. So it's really a good rule. Um, you know, the one year sit out rule, I always mm -hmm. thought helped them educationally because yeah. you get one extra year of school. Now transfer portal, you're eligible right away and um, gives them an opportunity to play basketball right away. So um, it's a new rule and, and, and we're really learning a lot about it and we're starting to get a lot of stats on it. And mm. you now have the transfer portal rule that changed and now you got COVID, everyone gets an extra year. Okay. So you got a lot of different rules now mixed yeah. up into a couple recruiting classes here yeah. and everyone's not 100% sure um, how they all work and how they're all gonna work moving forward. But it gives student athletes opportunities and I'm all for anything that's gonna give them more opportunities. Now, speaking of, uh, you had some uh, students that transferred for the yes. portal this year. We're gonna yeah. talk a little bit about them and about the incoming freshman class. So let's take yes. the uh, uh, transfer students first. Yeah, I mean, we were blessed to have, um, you know, these players in our program. Most of them, we had them there that they graduated and um, they exercised their right to go mm -hmm. to another school and, and get a graduate degree. And so we're thankful so yeah. much for their time here. And we also understand they got a lot of choices. Yeah. So we're thankful for that. Uh, but we picked up two players in the yeah. transfer portal too that I'm really proud of. Mm -hmm. One, Ralph Agee um, and Andre Hyatt from LSU and Ralph Agee from San Jose State. So mm -hmm. uh, we were able to fill some positions that we need um, while we wish those other guys a, a, a lot yeah. of luck and thankful that they were here for whatever yeah. amount of time Nine. that they're here. There's no four year player anymore. Yeah. There's no five year. There's no, if you have a player for one year, you're blessed to have him for that yeah. one year. And, and if he decides in his best interest to move on, you, you hug him and, and, and you thank him for being a part of your life for a year. Good. Now the incoming freshmen in there, what type of impact do you believe that they're gonna make immediately on the court for the team? Yeah, I mean, our freshman class has been, been really good and we actually have, all our freshmen from last year get a COVID year, so they're freshmen again this year. Oscar Palmquist, Dean Reber, Cliff Amore, I mean, these guys are all these guys are all freshmen again. Mawat Mag, mm -hmm. and now we have Jaden Jones mm -hmm. and we have Jalen Miller too, and uh, they've been awesome. And they're really great representatives of Rutgers. They're young, they're energetic, and and they're playing right now with a group of veteran guys. We're probably the one team in our league with five returning starters back, so we have a real veteran presence on this team and they've been those young guys with great energy you know that are fighting you know to figure out college basketball and really doing a good job now some of the seniors being uh, will be mentors towards the freshman kind of like a geo baker uh, mentoring some of the students some of the you know, freshmen coming in yeah without a doubt i mean uh we have some unbelievable veteran players, you know, Caleb McConnell, yeah. uh, Paul Mulcahy, he's been here. Even yeah. Ralph Agee now is a mm. fifth year senior from San Jose State, so he's yeah. older, he's been around college basketball. We have tremendous chemistry right now with this group and we have a lot of different leaders like Ron Harper's been around, yeah. Geo Baker's been around, um, you know, and these guys have battled through some tough years here, in, in, you know, in Piscataway and mm. have helped raise the level of college basketball and basketball here at Rutgers. So what is the next step? What's the next step for the program and how does the team get there? Yeah, I mean, just continue to can be consistent with yeah. I think the last two years, you know, two NCAA tournament bids like that's what we're going to yeah. do here moving forward. We want to be an NCAA tournament team every year, but we also want to graduate our players, which we've done uh, 100 yeah. percent. So we've done a really good job in that. And last year we had as high a grade point average of any team that I've ever coached at 3.3 .3 team grade point average. So we're graduating. We're selling out the rack. Yeah. These kids have yeah. worked their tail off to make this a really good basketball program. And I'm real proud and I want to continue that. I want to continue that tradition of competing for national championships and in, in the best league in the country. How strong is the Big Ten going to be conference this year <laughs> versus some of the other conferences? And can we make a strong run? Well, I will tell you, um, you know, what you see when you come to the rack is yeah. you see 
the best basketball programs in the country. Yeah. And traditionally, over the last yeah. hundred years, um, our league has led fan attendance for 45 straight years. Yeah. So the most fans watch Big Ten games. It's yeah. the most televised league in the country. Last year, we had 12 teams ranked out of 14. Yeah. Unheard of in yeah. the history of college basketball. Yes. Every program has been really good for a long time. The Ohio States, the Michigan States, the Michigans, the Purdue's. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just the Indiana's. It's just unbelievable basketball. And this year will be no different. You got Hall of Fame coaches. You have All-Americans mm -hmm. on the basketball side. You know, at Illinois, you have All-Americans at Michigan. You have mm -hmm. All-Americans at Michigan State. Um, so it's the most competitive league by far. And the venues that we play yeah. at are always sold out. Yeah. You never turn on a game at Purdue and see one empty seat in the no. stands. And you can't say that about a lot of other leagues in the country. So we just spoke uh, very briefly about the Big Ten Conference. Now that you've made two NCAA appearances, what are the, how are you going to manage the expectations from the fans? Yeah, you know, I, I love expectations. I think our players have high expectations. So those are the ones I really have to manage. Uh, and I like when they set lofty goals. Um, they work very hard. Um, we got to continue to be like, you know, I say this a lot, Jersey strong and, yeah. and tough. And, and I think if we continue to do that and play really unselfishly yeah. the way that they have been, um, you know, we, we have a chance to have, have an exciting year here. And I'm looking forward to everyone in Piscataway being here. How important is your recruiting in our, in our NCAA appearance um, in one win in the tournament? How did that how does that help your recruiting from last year? Yeah, I mean, when I first took the job, I was selling that vision of this mm. is what we want to do, but we had not done it. Mm. Now I'm saying we've, already, we've done this. We're now selling out the gym. We now have NBA you know, scouts at all of our games. And we work at a great university. Yeah. We got great facilities. We play in a great conference. I mean, Rutgers is an elite academic institution. Mm. You know, we have a lot of really good things to sell. And uh, obviously the more success you have, that helps in those areas. But I do think my staff, who's been unbelievable, we do a great job of evaluating guys that fit Rutgers, that want to be here in this great yeah. state of New Jersey, and that want to play in a basketball program that's trying to win a national championship. Now, I know we normally can't talk a lot about uh, recruiting uh, because of NCAA, but the 2022 recruiting class, is it progressing as of right now where you see your expectations? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, and we continue to recruit, you know, at a high level. And that's Carl Hobbs, Brandon Knight, TJ Thompson, my staff. Yeah do an unbelievable job, but we, we also develop players. I think a big part of college basketball um, is guys getting better. And I think if you look at the track record at Rutgers basketball, Geo Baker comes in here, um, gets better. Ron Harper gets better. Yeah. Caleb McConnell gets better. Paul Mulcahy, he gets better. Cliff gets better. You're just going to uh, see that's a product of how hard they work and the product of these great facilities, too, that we, we, we and take we're advantage gonna of. Stay another question. We're going to stay on the uh, recruiting segment. Um, the rivalry between Rutgers and Seton Hall, in-state rivalry. Um, ha to win a game against Seton Hall, it, it, one way or another, does that swing the pendulum with a prospective New Jersey recruit? Yeah, you know what? Anytime you win, it's mm. you, you know it's it's exciting. Um, that's a great rivalry. Yeah. So thankful that we're playing again this year. You know, I really believe in that's a great game for the state of New Jersey. You know, kids pick schools, though, for a lot of reasons. And uh, you hope anytime you win that 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 helps you. But they pick it because of the major. They pick it because location. They pick it because they want to go to a private school mm. or a public school. Mm. They pick it because they want to play in the Big Ten or the SEC. So um, you never quite know. Uh, but when you get those guys to believe in what you're doing, you know, it's, it's really exciting. So Jaden Jones was an early enrollee in 2021. How did that help him out being an early enrollee? And do you suggest that for other potential players that enroll early? Well, I really think, uh, you know, it's a tremendous advantage. Um, first of all, it was a COVID year last yeah. year. So when you're in high school last year, a lot of high schools didn't play at all. Yeah. So you never know if you were even going to have a season or not or go to class or have practices. And, you know, we certainly test every single day. Uh, we were able to have a season. We were able to practice. He was able now 
instead of spending his year wondering if he was going to play a game one week, mm-hmm. he was able to practice with us every day, mm-hmm. lift weights, mm-hmm. um, be around college players, be a part of a college practice. And I think that really is going to help him this year. It's always a tough job to be a freshman yeah. on a veteran team. But when you can get a half a year, when you can get an extra six, you know, six months in before the rest of the freshman class, it's, it's truly an advantage for you. Well, I know that uh, like our own chief of police here, when his son went to uh, one of the schools for football, he had enough credits to graduate in December and then enrolled January in to get that, you know, for the spring football program at the university that he was going to. And it did give him a leg up uh, going in, getting mm. acclimated a lot sooner than most of the other freshmen coming in. Huge advantage. I mean, I think football kind of, you know, does it right too. everyone mm. kind of red shirts, except for a rare few. Yeah. Um, it gives them a chance. College is harder academically. College practices are harder. There's more demands. So I do think anytime you can get that extra time before um, you start playing, it's an unbelievable advantage. Last year, uh, the Rutgers basketball team was con- was in the top 20 for statistics, uh, for defense. Um, that's a lofty goal to obtain again this mm-hmm. year. Where do you see that going? I mean, we have to get better, you know, in those areas. I mean, we've moved this program from one of the, you know, worst defensive teams in the mm-hmm. country my first few years to a top, you know, 10, top 15 team. And that's where we kind of want to stay. I think this team, because of our experience, we have tremendous size. Mm. Size matters in basketball. Yeah. Uh, this is the biggest team that we've ever had. Mm. Um, and so I think that bodes well to our defense and we're experienced. So I think we're going to be good on both ends of the floor. This has certainly been my best passing team. So we got really good passers at a lot of different positions. And, um, you know, I think those are two good signs. If we can get them to defend and they really mm. pass the ball, those are two good traits you know, moving into the toughest league in the country. Why, well, if anybody who watched the uh, Rutgers Houston game last year in the second round, so it was the defense that kept the team in the game. Mm. I mean, it's unfortunate we came up short, but mm. you know, you were against the second ranked team there mm. in the country. And I think they were even stunned that you, of the t- tenacity mm. of the defense and during that game. I think people don't realize, you know, the league that we play in prepares us for all that. Yeah. You know, when you have 12 ranked teams, like when you get into the NCAA tournament, yeah. you know, some of these leagues have two or three teams get into the NCAA tournament. Yeah. You know, we had nine last year. Yeah. So I don't care what your record is. Yeah. It's going to be a little worse in, in a league like this just because of the competition that you're playing night in and night out. But we feel very confident. We've stopped some of the best teams in the country you know, defensively, we can really score now. And, and, and because you score more, um, you, you sometimes lose a little uh, identity with your mm. defensive end. And you got mm. players that are more talented on the offensive end. We need to get that back because we're, we're tough, we rebound, and we got to defend. And then when the ball goes in, you're really good. And when the ball doesn't go in, you still have a chance to win. Yeah. And we're going to keep along that lines about scoring. Last year, you know, the guards were considered the the, you know, the, the scoring end of the team last year is that where do you fit? fit yeah, our your- bigs, we score as well around the basket as we ever have. Yeah. So um, but we have experienced guards, too. So I, I really think we're truly an inside out team. Um, we have really good post guys yeah. and um, we got those mix and match guys too. Ron yeah. Harper can go inside, yeah. outside. Andre Hyatt can go inside, outside. You know, Paul Mulcahy can go yeah. inside, outside. So we got a lot of different and interesting uh, players. Now you mentioned a little earlier about how um, you have more beef on the court, the largest yeah. team at there. How much of an impact is that really going to make during compared to the last year's team? Yeah. For this year's team. Oh, it's going to make a tremendous, yeah, tremendous impact. Although we do play in the tallest league in the country, too. So you have to have size. It's a really uh, size with tremendous bigs. Um, But I think more importantly, our team chemistry is going to be the most important thing this year. A, you got to stay healthy. We still got to fight COVID and hopefully uh, we don't have issues there. But uh, our team chemistry has been great. And we got to continue with that because I think it's a team. You know, it's a team sport, and we got to always remember that. Uh, we're going to switch gears now. Um, the big thing now when college uh, athletes now is the names, image, and likenesses agreements with the NCAA. 
Well, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm sure you I, haven't been asked been asked that question yeah. before. Uh, I think there are tremendous opportunities. I, just I'm, just as a side note, I, there's still probably a lot of people out in uh, TV land that don't know what that is. Yeah. You know, lay people who don't watch right. college sports and right. to that nature. So can you right. just briefly tell? Sure. Me? Name, image, and likeness um, now is an opportunity for our players to have their own brands and, mm -hmm. and make money off their name, yeah. image, and likeness. In the past, when they were on scholarship, they kind of gave up those rights. Yeah. Um, so our guys can work normal jobs. They can have opportunities through the media. Um, they can sell t-shirts. They can start basketball camps. Yeah. They can do things that weren't available to them in the past. I think it's unbelievable. I think also it's, it's a long time coming. Mm. I think as universities, we're still trying to figure it out. Yeah. And I think the players in some ways are still trying to figure it out. But I like the fact that, you know, my guys can have opportunities doing basketball stuff yeah. um, that they could never have in the past and, and uh, you know, some of them are really uh, doing well and learning business opportunities and I think it bodes well for them moving forward. I, I think uh, one uh, sports reporter that this is going to lend a lot of the uh, athletes to now take up business degrees uh, while they're at school because of knowing how con uh, contracting and things like Absolutely. that. I mean it, it's, it's really well worth a life learning experience. It's great experience for them. They're meeting and, and, and looking at contracts. They're, yeah. you know, talking to lawyers. They're meeting with media people. You know, they're doing things that they couldn't do in the past. And I think any experience that these young student athletes get helps them moving forward. And that's what we're all about here in college, giving them opportunities to make choices and, and to learn from those choices. And, um, you know, name, image and like this is going to be very interesting moving forward. And I hope all of our guys get great yeah. opportunities um, to learn business and learn life experiences. And I think it was interesting, I believe it was Geo Baker that was one of the ones that was leading the, the uh, push to have that. Pr students. Proud of them. I mean, our yeah. guys took on a lot of issues, this but social injustice and yeah. Kobe Bryant and yeah. COVID and name, image and likeness. You know, I'm real proud of how they represented uh, their families and, and our basketball program. And uh, Geo certainly was at the forefront of, of name, image and likeness. So you have Geo Baker back and Ron Harper Jr. back. How important is them as seniors going to be to leaders in the team for setting the tempo for everybody else? I mean, you have a 12 person roster. Right. And, you know, and even though somebody might not see playing time mm -hmm. as much as other players here in this practice facility, a lot of what happens out on the court during game day is developed right here on this practice court. With, without a doubt. I mean, first of all, both those guys, um, Gio's a graduate, so yeah. he's in grad school. Perfect example, how to be a good student athlete. Yeah. Ron Harper's a terrific student. He's in line to graduate here in May. So they're great examples for our younger guys. Of they, you can play basketball at the highest level and get your degree. Um, and they both tested the waters last year, yeah. and I think they got valuable feedback from the NBA, and they've really had an unbelievable summer with that feedback, mm. working hard, try to improve, you know, mm. their game of basketball. But they're back, they're on a mission. I think with Caleb McConnell and mm. Paul Mulcahy, those guys are, you know, worked hard and, and, and are back with a little bit of a mission and they're good leaders anyway. So mm. hopefully they continue their story kind of uh, as an example of you can come to Rutgers, maybe as um, recruits that weren't as glamorized as yeah. some recruits, and you can have unbelievable careers if you just continue to work and, and make yourself better and help raise a basketball program. So excited to have their leadership back. So we pretty much finished up talking about the team and um, you're now in your sixth year as the head coach. Oh. Scary, uh, why don't you scary. tell us a little bit about you personally, if you don't mind, <laughs> uh, for those folks that just pick up and read the sports papers <laughs> about you talking about a game or something. Yeah. They don't see the Steve Peichel mm -hmm. behind the scenes. Yeah. I tell you what, six years is amazing when yeah. you say that because it seems like I just got here five minutes ago um, and now we're in year six. But um, I'm a proud father. I got a great wife um, who I met at University of Connecticut. Um, when I was there, I, I have four kids, two girls and two boys. Yeah. and. Three of them are in college right yeah. now. My daughter played basketball at Northwestern, Brooke, and she's now uh, studying to be a nurse at George Washington University. My son, I'm real proud, is a junior here at Rutgers mm. and doing great in school mm. and uh, just a wonderful person. And then my youngest daughter is a high school All-American playing lacrosse at North Carolina. 
and um, she's coming home tonight. So I'm okay. probably haven't seen her since I dropped her off on August 10th yeah. uh, there. And then my youngest guy is a basketball player and he's at Gil St. Bernard. Okay. He's a freshman there uh, in their program. But, uh, you know, don't have many hobbies, love basketball. So are you able to sneak over to some of your son's games? Every now and then, you yeah. know, unfortunately, part of my job here, I miss a lot of my kids' games, but yeah. my wife goes to all of them. And, uh, yeah. you know, just uh, real proud of my kids. They've, they've done an unbelievable job. My wife, unbelievable mother and, and really has raised them, um, you know, and they're smart, they're good students, yeah. and, and, and they work hard. Well, I think the, the viewers have to know that even Coach Peichel does have a family and a life, too. That yeah. uh, <laughs> He doesn't get dressed up uh, in disguises to go watch his family and <laughs> children at the, the games, though. But, you yeah. know, that's some of the challenges head coaches have. You're, you're dividing family time with your work responsibilities and it's not easy to do that there's you know there's no doubt 365 yeah. days a year is, is your job when uh, but I love it here you know I was blessed to get this opportunity I love living in New Jersey uh, it's a great state and uh, Rutgers Nation powerful and exciting good people and um, couldn't be more proud and excited too not just about basketball, what we're building. Yeah. I mean, field hockey yeah. is, you know, top number five. Number two this week. I yeah, believe. number two. The unbelievable job that she's yeah. done. And how about our women's soccer program? Yeah. You know, Mike O'Neill's done an unbelievable yeah. job for a long time. We've got great mm -hmm. women's soccer, and they just, um, you know, clinched a league title. It'll be the first one here, and they have a couple games left, too. But our lacrosse teams both went to the NCAA tournament. The job that they're doing. Coach Chiano, a grand slam. As good a guy, he's brought energy back into that program. There's a buzz around the state. I work side by side, yeah. Hall of Fame coach. She's won more games than I could ever dream of mm -hmm. even coaching and she's doing an unbelievable job. Pat Hobbs, our AD, yeah. is building new buildings. It's not yeah. easy during this time. He's raising yeah. money. The job he's done has is, is been unbelievable. And then President Holloway, our new president, yeah. Unbelievable. We got a brand new president. Couldn't be more excited. Former football player um, at Stanford has done an unbelievable job in some of the most you know difficult times. You could be, you know, a president of a university during unprecedented COVID and a pandemic. And so the job that he's done and enthusiasm that he's brought. So I'm blessed to be a part of Rutgers at this time. Yep. A uh, couple last minute softball questions. You Your favorite vacation area. Oh, I'm, I'm Long Island, Montauk. Okay. You know, I would say I, I worked at Stony Brook for a long time and I've gone out okay. there. Love the beach there and I love the whole whole environment there. All right, I'll get a, your favorite pizza topping. Um, I like sausage. Okay. Uh, yeah, All right. I'm a sausage pizza guy, but uh, don't have it enough. And last but not least, uh, your favorite type of restaurant. I'm Italian. So okay, I just like it, Coach Ciano. There you go, Coach Ciano. And he and I are going to go soon, too. And I'm going to make sure he picks up the tab. Okay. That, <laughs> well, I want to uh, thank uh, the head Rutgers men's basketball coach, Steve Peichel, for stopping by Ion Piscataway here. Nowhere, and we wish to Piscataway folks and the viewership here wish um, the 2021-2022 season the best of luck and on uh, the season and in the Big Ten and hopefully the NCAA tournament. I love we it. We expect you to go deep. Thank you. And one last thing, I did lose a stake bet to the mayor of, um, of Houston during that game. Um, did you? Mayor Turner, we, we had bet on the game. So next time I run into him, I owe him a steak dinner. So put it on Coach Yano's bill. <laughs> <That's> okay. <laughs> so with that, we'll, we'll see you back in the studio. Next, we're going to stroll down Hose Lane to go head to the Piscataway High School football stadium for the dedication of the Ken Arm, Commissioner Ken Arnwood High School football stadium. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. I'd like to start off by asking all of you to join me in a moment of silence for the loss of this fine young man. Thank you. 
I couldn't be more excited for this evening. I didn't know Commissioner Armwood, but his positive energy and his legacy are present whenever anybody talks about him. Joining us tonight are some very special people that have known Commissioner Armwood in many different areas of life. Please join me in welcoming our Board of Education President, Ms. Shalia Hobson. Our Board of Education Vice President, Mrs. Kimberly Lane. Board of Education members, Ms. Brenda Smith. Mr. Calvin Laughlin. And Ms. Chantel Cherry. The Scataway Mayor, Mr. Brian Waller. Scataway Town Council members, Mr. Jim Bullard. Mr. Steve Kahn. Mrs. Michelle Lombardi. Mr. Linwood Rouse. Mr. Kapil Shaw. And Mr. Frank Ern. Middlesex County Commissioner Director, Mr. Ronald Rios. Middlesex County Commissioner Deputy Director, Ms. Shanti Nara. Middlesex County Sheriff, Mrs. Mildred Scott. Middlesex County Surrogate, Mrs. Clarabelle Cortez. Middlesex County Commissioner, Mr. Charles Kenny. Mrs. Chanel Scott McCollum and Interim Executive County Superintendent, Mr. Kyle Anderson. Also help us welcome the Acting Commissioner of Education, Mrs. Angelica Allen McMillan. State Senator, Mr. Bob Smith. Commissioner of the New Jersey Police Training Commission, Mr. Giles Ship. Edison Councilwoman, Mrs. Joyce Ship Freeman. President of the NAACP, the Perth Amboy Branch, Ms. Donna Stewart. And through this process, I've talked to uh, a few family members of Kenny Armwood. I'd like to welcome and thank Valerie Adams Manigault and Estelle Adams. I would also like to thank some very special people from Piscataway, where I work with, that really helped me uh, pull off this fine event. Piscataway High School Principal, Mr. Christopher Baldassano. Athletic Director, Mr. Rob Harmer. The Supervisor of Visual Performing Arts, Rebecca Sterlocki. Our Business Administrator, Mr. David Olivero. And our Public Information Officer, Ms. Judy Palermo. And lastly, our great Buildings and Grounds Department. I know I drove them crazy for probably about the last month, but I really appreciate the way this turned out. Our PA announcer, Justin, read some of Kenny Armwood's very impressive accomplishments. But during the time leading to this dedication, I have had the honor to speak to many people uh, about Commissioner Armwood. He seemed to put a smile on everybody's face, a man larger than life who put other people first. And his legacy reaches far and wide. For example, with us tonight, all the way from Oregon, is Dr. Daniel Rodriguez. Dr. Rodriguez. Dr. Rodriguez was the superintendent of this great district when Kenny Armwood was a board member. As life would have it, they both took different positions and, and found other places in life, but their bond was so strong that they kept in touch and very close throughout his life. Thank you for coming back. Also behind me is an American flag sent to our district by Senator Robert Menendez with this proclamation. 
This is to certify that the accompanying flag was flown over the United States Capitol building in memory of Middlesex County Commissioner Kenny Armwood at the request of U.S. Senator Robert Menendez. This flag and proclamation will be secured and displayed in our high school halls from now on. Such a great honor for a great man. Now, after we rebuilt our high school stadium and before the naming process began, I had a very important conversation with a wonderful woman, Mrs. Patsy Chiardi. Mrs. Chiardi is the wife of the late Dominic Chiardi, who the stadium was named after for many years. It has been a pleasure getting to know Mrs. Chiardi. She's a very generous and humble person, and I would like to ask her to join me here. Please help me welcome Ms. Patsy Chiardi. Okay. Good evening, everyone. I want to thank our superintendent for giving me the opportunity to say a few words about my husband, Dominic Chardy, whose name has been on this field for over 30 years, and to say what an honor it has been for our family and why I thought it was time for a new change. I promise you I'll be brief. Our family has lived in Piscataway for 62 years. Dominic served 26 of those years on the school board. He loved Piscataway. He loved the school system and the athletic programs. We raised our five children here. All graduated from Piscataway High School and went on to college, and then they married, moved, and had children of their own. They took pride in bringing their children back here to take pictures of the stadium with their grandfather's name on it. Most of the parents that came here when I was coming are no longer here. My husband died eight years ago and I'm now 86. It began to occur to me that fewer and fewer people knew who Dominic was and that perhaps it was time to retire Dominic's name and put up a name that was more recognizable to the community. When I read that the field was going to be redone, I thought this was the perfect time, and I let my feelings be known. The school board wisely selected Kenny Armwood. He was only 19 when he was elected to the school board. Dominic was on the school board at that time and liked him very much. Over the last many years, Kenny served Piscataway and Middlesex County well. His achievements, as we've heard here tonight, are numerous. Unfortunately, he was taken from, taken from us much too soon. So in his honor, the stadium now will be called the Kenny Armwood Stadium. And it's so easy for me to say that. I thought it would be difficult, but it isn't. He's earned this. May his family and friends feel the pride that my family has felt for so long and may Kenny's memory live on for many, many years. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to also uh, recognize my other colleagues that are here as well. Commissioner Tamaro, Commissioner Leslie Koppel, and Commissioner uh, Ascona Barber. I'm honored to join you all for this important and bittersweet occasion. I say bittersweet because while dedicating this stadium in Deputy Director Armwood's memory is a tremendous and fitting way to honor him and all of the good he did for the people of Piscataway and Middlesex County. I know that I speak for each and every one of us when I say that I would much prefer 
having Ken here with us today. Seven months have passed since we received the shocking and devastating news of Ken's death, but it feels like it was yesterday. I still can't believe that I'll never again be greeted by that warm smile or listen to him speak about the many causes he worked so passionately for. In losing Ken, I, along with the board, entire board of county board commissioners, lost not only an excellent colleague, but a wonderful, irreplaceable friend as well. From the days of his first position in public office, right up until his final role as deputy director of Middlesex County Board of County Commissioners, Ken never lost sight of the true meaning of public service helping people. Dr. Martin Luther King famously said, and I quote, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? Kenny not only embodied that quote, caring for others in a profound way and doing everything he could for them, but he had a motto of his own that he lived by, you gotta do something. He believed so deeply in showing up, listening, and putting in the work to support people, to support the causes he believed in, and to make real change possible. Ken was and remains an inspiration to too many people, but especially to our younger generation. That includes the hundreds of students he spoke to at Boys State each year entertaining them with stories about his time on the Piscataway School Board and inspiring them to find their passion in the world and pursue it. It also includes the many, many young people he met and mentored through Edison Job Corps, providing support, encouragement, and guidance. That's why it's so fitting that this football stadium, where Ken spent so many hours as a high school student, is being named in his honor. Ken left us much too soon, but he left behind an amazing legacy that can be seen in his lifetime of public service. The colleagues who became friends, the friends he treated as family, and the lives he touched in Piscataway and throughout Middlesex County and beyond. Each of us is better for having known Kenny Armwood, for being fortunate enough to call him our colleague and friend. Naming this stadium in his honor ensures that young people and the entire community will continue to know his name and be inspired by him for generations to come. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. We were here months ago for Kenny's uh, funeral service. And I can remember sitting out here on a pretty hot day without a hat, getting a pretty good sunburn, but listening for two hours to the friends and family, political colleagues of Kenny report the wonderful things that he had done during his life. And I am mature enough to actually have known Dominic Ciardi, as well as being a great friend of Kenny. And I would say that there are two, there is a word that describes both of them. And that word is feisty. Dominic served for years uh, representing the community on the school board, did a fine, fine job. And Kenny Armwood did the same. And I have to congratulate the Chiardi family and Pat for taking a very expansive view of the community's icons. And maybe it's time to move on. Uh, Kenny, I think, serves as a role model for every student here. This is really, in fact, not about Kenny Armwood. It's about you the students of Piscataway High School, and the, your brothers and sisters who may be in the uh, stands. The reason it's about you 
is that Kenny Armwood's life is a model that every one of us should be quite proud of and maybe can be a model for us, public service, trying to do the best for everyone. And you didn't know Kenny, but I did. He had a laugh that wouldn't quit. In fact, you know, I don't want to be a little crazy here, but I could almost hear him laughing, looking down, saying this is a great honor. And I'd like to congratulate the Piscataway Board of Education for a brilliant idea. Really. And then I want to congratulate all of you because when you come to the stadium in the future, and someday it'll be with your own kids or friends, and people look at the stadium scoreboard, the people who are with you are gonna say, who was Kenny Armwood? And it's your job to tell people what a great job he did and hopefully take a look at his life as a possible model for you. And on that, it's a happy note. This, you know, you're, you would think a dedication ceremony might be a little somber. This is a great moment. And Kenny Armwood, who may not be physically with, with us at this moment, I'm telling you right now, he's laughing and enjoying this every minute. Thank you so much. God bless. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Mrs. Chiardi, thank you for those beautiful words. Uh, I would pay a boatload of money to think what Dominic and Kenny are thinking right now. Uh, I know Dominic was a mentor of Kenny, uh, spent a lot of time together when they were on the Board of Education together, and I, I always loved the stories that Kenny would tell of his time on the Board of Ed. I want to thank all the folks that are down here for this, this dedication here today. And what I would like to say is that Kenny was all about the youth in our community, whether it's Piscataway Township or Middlesex County. He was first and foremost about the youth. And I remember the first time uh, after he had played football uh, and he had was elected to the town council in 2004, we were on for a game and he said, Mayor, we need to do something about the condition of this field. And he convinced me to work with the Board of Education. Uh, we, that was the first time in 2005 we had an artificial field put down and uh, renewed the track and the here. Because he remembered the days when he played as a high school football player back in the 90s on here. He wanted to make sure the future students had a better facility than he did when he was playing on the field. So that was one of the remnants of Kenny Armwood being an elected official. He encouraged other officials to work together to do have good government policy. And yes, sometimes that does happen. And I want to thank my friend, Kenny Armwood, for everything that he taught me and our fellow colleagues in the governmental world and in the Piscataway and Middlesex County community at large. We will miss him every day. And as Senator Smith said, for those future students out there, when you get a chance, if you want, pick up the phone, give myself a call or the council members a call and ask them what we thought about Kenny Armwood because we want to make sure that his memory sticks around for a very long time. And I think Coach Higgins is guaranteeing a win today through a dedication. Not putting a lot of pressure on Coach Higgins tonight, but we want to win here. And I would like to see us beat Hillsborough tonight. So, so with that, we want to go out with a bang tonight, Dr. Rinelli, and to thank you uh, to all the Board of Education members here tonight. Before we move on, quickly, I just want to thank the Hillsborough High School team, coaches, fans, for their patience and for joining us for this. I'd also like to bring up our board president, Ms. Shalia Hobson, for some words. Thank you, Dr. Rinelli. 
Good evening. So I'm pleased to be here tonight to represent the Piscataway Board of Education uh, at this event. Commissioner Armwood served as an inspiration to so many people here, me in particular. And uh, all throughout Middlesex County, we thank him for his presence. As a board, we were delighted to affirm the ad hoc committee and the committee's choice to rename uh, this stadium the Kenny Armwood Stadium. And I would like to thank all of the board members, Superintendent Rinelli, the administrators, uh, and the community, all the members who were involved in this naming process, the Culture Climate and Community Relations Committee, and the Ad Hoc Committee for their tireless efforts in this important dedication. I know I am one of many who look forward to the exciting football games and other great evening events under the stars in the Kenny Armwood Stadium. I thank you all for being here, and I don't know if anyone knows this, but I am a pastor, so I'm going to leave you with this, to God be the glory. So for our last segment of this dedication, I would like to ask uh, the family and friends of Kenny to come join me underneath the sign as quickly as we can. Come on, everybody up. In just a short time, our Chiefs football team, our cheerleaders, our marching band, and our dance team will continue their own great legacy on a field that will inspire a community to do great things and continue to say, you gotta do something. And now, let's officially dedicate. <laughs> Kenny Armwood Stadium. I want to thank everybody for watching in November. I am Piscataway, and remember, Thanksgiving is right around the corner. And on behalf of the township government, I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Also, for December, I am Piscataway. We are going to have a special visit from Santa. So I want all the children to mark your calendars. <laughs>